millions of people paid their respects to Queen Elizabeth II, whose funeral brought in thousands of people, including 90 world leaders. President Biden, the Emperor of Japan, and numerous others all flew into London to attend the service. In fact, there were so many leaders that except for Biden, they couldn't let each of them have their own security, so the UK put them on buses to bring them in. What I wouldn't have done to be a fly on the wall of that bus. Let's put some music and dance like the Queen would have wanted. You put away that cheese right now. I'm not a fan of French cheese, and I don't believe the Queen would have approved of dancing at all. There were leaders who, of course, were not invited to the funeral, like Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and the leaders of Russia, Venezuela, and Iran. The Queen's death has sparked conversations on the future of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth, so I figured we'd unpack that can of worms. The UK is made up of four countries, England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. Queen Elizabeth worked very hard at keeping the UK united, and some experts wonder whether her death might lead Northern Ireland and Scotland in particular to break away from this union. Before the Queen's passing, Scotland's leader had set a plan for Scots to vote on a referendum for its independence. This is actually the second time Scotland is pursuing this referendum, and what sparked it is not the Queen's death, but that the majority of Scots were in favor of staying in the European Union and were annoyed when London decided to break away. The referendum is being planned for a vote next October 2023, so it'll be interesting to see if the Queen's passing further pushes Scots toward independence, since they felt closer to her than they do to King Charles. Let's also talk about the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth is a group of 54 nations, most of which were former British colonies, and they work together on issues like trade, the environment, and education. The Queen led the Commonwealth, and now King Charles will. It's not like a defense pact, and they don't have an obligation to one another, it's more that they're about fostering cooperation. The Queen was also head of state for 15 of the countries in the Commonwealth, which doesn't mean she ruled them, it just means it's a nod to the British Crown and the British Empire those countries used to be part of. So that's why Canada and Australia, for example, just have prime ministers. Because the Queen was the head of state. Kinda weird, right? Well, to us it is, at least. But that might not remain the case forever, since before the Queen's passing, countries were already starting to question that setup. Barbados earlier this year, for example, removed the Queen as the head of state, and there are rumblings in Jamaica and Australia about doing the same. I don't think we're about to see the UK or the Commonwealth crumble, but I do expect some shifts and changes following the Queen's death. And it's not that King Charles isn't liked, but he's just not as popular as the Queen was, and she was good at being the glue that held it all together.